uh, well, this is the final presentation. This is just to give you the uh, information to get started if you're already excited or if you just think, oh, should I do this or should I? So my name is Joshua Oyemi and uh, I'm going to talk about the hardware and the software that you need to get started on the road to being a machine learning AI expert. And I might be biased in some ways, but you just, I'm just presenting my own point of view of the whole thing. So the outline is basically split into hardware and software. And uh, I'm going to talk about the general system requirements that you need and uh, um, CPU and GPUs, more about GPUs, software, operating systems. Um, and uh, I'm going to be biased towards Python, so forgive me for that. And uh, I'm going to just give you some um, steps to get started. In the so basically, on hardware, I could say that. Most of us here have what we need to get started with the app. And uh, I'm sure, I mean, if you have a system that is about a i5, let's just say multi-core processing unit, then it's good enough to do some uh, work. Like uh, the KMS algorithm is not very uh, computationally expensive. And these are uh, popular laptop brands that you can actually use. And if you have a gaming laptop, that's a sweet spot for you. I mean, you can just get started today. And most of the, the ultra books from 2016 and 2017, they are also very good. And so for, for general system requirements, I think um, most of you here will be, uh, will be going anywhere. And uh, just one note here is that the most computationally expensive area of AI is particularly dealing with the pattern information. And most of the people have talked about that, trying to recognize digits and stuff. And here you have object recognition and uh, the language processing. These are like most computationally expensive part because you have to deal with like, the density of data, the number of features that you deal with are very large. So you have to use a uh, lot of computation power. So I would say that the uh, ideal system is a combination of a real GPU and a good CPU. So basically you have a CPU that does all the general thing on your laptop and all the systems actually have a CPU, so, but some systems don't have a GPU. And so what is a GPU? A GPU is something, it's a graphic processing unit, basically. And it helps um, you know, gra uh, to render graphics in your system. And this is a comparison, basically, on how CPU and, uh, and GPU renders graphics. And CPU does it like this, like uh, using a paint, uh, paint gun. And a GPU can distributes the workload of graphics rendering uh, using uh, multiple cores at the same time. So uh, the best CPUs that we have today are maybe uh, 12, 16, 18 cores, but you can have GPUs that have hundreds and thousands of cores, so, which makes them very uh, useful for uh, um, game rendering, and it can also be used uh, for uh, accelerating computation of uh, workloads. Uh, for example, this is just a, a comparison also between uh, some tasks on the CPU and the GPU. So this person tried to train a, a model that is able to recognize some digits. And on the CPU, you have seven hours. And on the GPU, you can have a cell as low as 48, uh, 46 minutes, which is like 10 times the uh, faster to train this on the GPU. So, what is the recommendation for GPUs? Uh, I, I would say that not all, all GPUs are, are not created the same. So um, basically in this area, NVIDIA GPUs, which is a company that produces GPUs, uh, is most popular for this area. And if your laptop has this uh, sticker on it, then I would say that uh, it has a GPU. Uh, and basically what you have to look out for is uh, the GPU memory, and the more the GPU memory, then the more data you can feed in and use for training. And there are four categories that I've um, identified for GPUs. Uh, all gaming laptops and um, mobile operations are fall under like the mobile workstation, so you can do whatever you want anywhere, official, uh, on the move. And if you need more power, like if you need to work on something really, really expensive, then you need a dedicated GPU cell. 
Uh, for example, in this case, you have a GTX 1080. Uh, these are uh, like the, the ones that gamers actually buy and set up the system. And there is also a option for external GPU. That is, you can use your laptop and you can buy an external uh, setup that you can always plug in, in, into your laptop. Even though you have to think about the compatibility, but there is an option, uh, an option for that. And there is uh, a cloud services, uh, which is provided by Google, Amazon, or Microsoft these days. So basically, if you don't have a GPU in your system, you can still do uh, some uh, uh, AI or some uh, really expensive uh, training. So you just have to sign up for this kind of services, which are actually uh, cloud services. So that is it about our hardware. Uh, what about software? So uh, we talk about the uh, operating systems. You have to do it on the system. We just compare Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, which are the most popular. There is a Chrome OS that is coming up recently, and uh, that could also be useful. So uh, comparing this uh, from Stack Overflow, a site where people ask questions uh, about I mean, programming and stuff. And find out that uh, Windows has uh, more than 50% uh, of the users on Stack Overflow. And for the number of systems on the internet, basically, you know, the user side anyway, then Windows takes about 80%. However, uh, there is a Mac OS and there is a Linux. Linux also is a very good one. So, what is my recommendation? My recommendation basically is uh, using Linux because there are um, tools that you need that are already there. And there is a big uh, user base for it. But if you're not you know, good with that, then any of the Mac OS or Windows is perfect. All right, so coming into programming languages, you can see a trend here uh, from 2012, uh, since the beginning of uh, the booming of uh, uh, deep learning, Python has become very, very popular. And most of the frameworks that you have today are uh, on AI or deep learning or function is basically Python. And so I would you know, recommend basically, if you're learning Python, that's good. If you're thinking of a programming language to learn, and this is uh, also from uh, this is another graph from Katie uh, Nuggets. It's uh, another site that deals with uh, analytics, data science, machine learning software. And you can see also that most people use Python. R is also very popular. And uh, in the academic space, anyway, MATLAB it's a proprietary software. However, Octave, which is uh, an alternative to MATLAB, is also useful. So coming into Python libraries, uh, I would not say libraries, but I would say tools that you need. Uh, if you do the programming, you will understand that you don't have to write a code from the beginning. So you can take a code from other people and just use it. So, which are the most popular frameworks or tools that you can use? You might have heard of uh, TensorFlow by Google, and it has, it's the most popular framework. And this is Keras, it's also uh, another framework. There is Cafe, there is PyTorch. And for beginners, I would recommend using Keras because it's more high level. According to the people who created it, it's a deep learning for humans. And it was really useful for me when I started uh, learning uh, deep learning. And these are other libraries that you would need uh, scientific learning. But this is general machine learning. Pandas for your uh, data, managing data. And Anaconda is the container that brings everything together. Now we can take, uh, take a closer look to uh, one, of, one or two of the frameworks. TensorFlow is originally in Python, and this is where I bring everyone together because there is uh, different types of language for TensorFlow. So for JavaScript, for C++, for Java, for CodeSwift. It has an API for them, so you can easily use TensorFlow in other data languages. And recommending Keras is because it's high level. You can think of it like uh, TensorFlow is the chassis of the car, and you have to do a lot of tuning, but Keras is the fourth car, just getting the drive. 
So, how do you get started if you want to start today? Uh, these are the simple steps, it's just maybe four steps that you need to get started with. You install an Anaconda, which is the container that brings everything together. Then you install uh, TensorFlow. So once you install Anaconda, then you can use this code or command line code to install the rest of the packages that you need. And the first exercise, which is uh, training how to recognize and digits, you can try it. And just to show you how simple, these are how many lines of code, maybe less than 20, that actually you can use to train a network that can uh, recognize digits. And if you want to see the code, I mean the full code is here, you can use that. And in summary, I've talked about the hardware that you need in the software. I hope that I've been able to uh, spawn your uh, curiosity to just try something, no matter the, uh, the information or the resources that you have. Thank you.